This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, hello there, hello there. It's Jeff Gunner Diamond welcoming you to another sports catastrophe on this day. Uh, and on this day, February the 6th, 1993, one of the best and biggest blowouts in All-Star Game history happened. NHL All-Star Game history. It was the match de trois, or the All-Star Game, if you will. Montreal got to host the and it also came in 93 mostly because it was the 100th anniversary of the Stanley Cup and what city had the first Stanley Cup? Montreal. Anyway, so this was huge. It was the Candles versus the Whales. And anyway, the Campbell Conference is what we call the Western Conference and the Whales is what we call the East. So, it was a huge matchup and all that. The fans voted their man, Patrick Waugh, in as a starter and all that. Before the start of the game, Mario Lemieux was hailed because Lemieux was in attendance but couldn't play in the All-Star game, even though he was scoring a good clip. The reason? He had Hodgkin's disease. Non-Hodgkin's non -Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, for some So, anyway, Lemieux couldn't play. There will be a Lemieux thing about his return to the lineup in 93. But anyway, this was huge. The score was 16 to 6, by the way. So anyway, in the Super Skill the Super Skills competition, Ray Bork went four for four in accuracy. Mike Gardner was the fastest skater at 13.5 seconds. L.I. Frady put up his 105 miles per hour shot. The famous skullet, like a skull bullet. And it was the hardest shot till Sedan Charm in 2009. And he broke with 108 miles per hour in 2012. Anyway, so the goalie competition was John Casey. John Casey. Really? Anyway, the game was on. Ottawa and Tampa were allowed to send representatives to the All-Star game. At least one. So anyway, the first period was uneventful. Ed Belfour was in the net for the Campbell Conference, and he was just terrible. Well, the first three minutes went off for a hitch, but then Kevin Lowe passed it to Adam Oates to Mike Gardner. Who scored to make it one nothing? Gardner wasn't even supposed to be in the All-Star game, but with an injury to Mark Messier, he was a replacement for the Rangers. And his fellow Ranger, Kevin Lowe, gave him the puck. Adam Oates played for Boston at that time. But then, 22 seconds later, it was a fluky goal. Belfort went to play for the puck. It went right between his legs, and there's Mike Gardner right there. Poof! Back to the skater. Two goals on two shots, if you will. So Oates got two assists. Right off the bat. And then Oates and Gardner set up Peter Bondra of the Capitals. They would get three nils. So Oates and Gardner had three points in four minutes of the All Star game. However, it wasn't done yet. But everything settled down. And on the power play, Bork passed to McGilney for the goal. Alex McGilney of the Sabres, Bork of the Bruins. Now remember, not too many penalties happened in an All Star game, but there was one. Dave Manson for tripping. And then Pierre Turgeon, the man from the New York Islanders, put a goal in from Recchi to make it 5 0. Mark Recchi of the Penguins. Or was it the Flyers? Sorry, the Flyers. And then Mike Gardner did it again. He put up a hat trick. His hat trick goal from Oats and Bondra. So Adam Oates had four assists in the first period of the All Star game. And Gardner had three goals. It was 6 0 Wales at the end of one period. Yes, a shadow in the first period. And then it just got worse and worse. Rick Tockett of the Penguins scored from Kevin Stevens and Recky. So Penguin and Flyer. Tockett and Recky were traded for each other in 92. So anyway, it was 7 nothing. Then Tershawn gave a goal to Mike Garner, his fourth to make it 8 nothing. Garner was on his way to try to get to 5 
and break the All-Star Game scoring record. Set by Wayne Gretzky in 1983, Murray Lemieux in 1990, and Vinny Douglas in 91. And then Scott Stevens scored to make it 9 nothing. No, pass it to Rick Tockett to score 9 nothing. Stevens of the Devils. So 9 nothing. Unfortunately, though, the shutout streak was done as Ronick scored at 5.52 from Solani. You know, Blackhawk from a jet. Um, Brad Marsh of the Ottawa Senators, who was in because of a commissioner's pick, passed to, to Recky for a goal. And then the Campbells came back with a goal by Kiz Kelly Kizio of the San Jose Sharks. Big move. Trading for the Rangers to trade Kizio to the Sharks. Ronick and Modano got the assist. And then it was Kevin Stevens for the Whales from Recky. And then Sakic and Yager, Sakic for the Nordiques, Yager the Penguins, passed it to Pierre Turgeon, who put up his second of the game. Score after two periods, 12 to 2. This bit game is basically over. But both teams would score four goals in the third period. Pella Fontaine of the Sabres scored. Yes, Sabres. Uh, Yager, Brad Marsh even scored, which was amazing because he didn't score a goal the entire year. In the regular season, but he scored in the All-Star game from Stevens and Recky. That was nice of him. And Terjean scored again. So Terjean quietly had a hat-trick. While Gardner had four goals. Everyone forgets about Pierre Terjean's hat-trick. Uh, meanwhile, the Campbells had Doug Gilmore, the Leafs player. Timo Solani of the Jets. And Babel Burry scored twice for the Canucks. And that was it. So... So there were some things going on and all that. Brian Leach was supposed to play for the Wales, but he got injured. So Kevin Lowe, his fellow teammate, was his replacement. Messier was selected but couldn't play, so Gardner was named as a replacement. Jeff Brown of the Blues was supposed to be in the All-Star game, but his teammate Garth Butcher was his replacement. Wow. And then, you know, Lemieux was a starter, but couldn't play Judy Hodgkin, so Rick Tockett was his replacement in the starting lineup. I would have went with Rickey, but anyway. So the starting lineup for the Wales were goalie was Patty Waugh, Yamura Yager, Rick Tockett and Kevin Stevens were the forward line, Ray Bork and Kevin Lowe, the defense. Brad Marsh was picked as a commissioner selection to play in the game for the Wales. They had Craig. The other goalies were. Craig Billington of the New Jersey Devils. Why, I don't know. And Peter Sidorkowitz of the Senators. I guess because they needed an Ottawa Senator. The joke was on um, everyone. Sidorkowitz didn't do well for Ottawa. Well, of course, Ottawa sucked in the inaugural season, and we're tanking for Dyke. But Sidorkowitz technically got the win because he played the second period. I was like, how come there weren't any of the good goals? No Tom Parasso? No Mike Richter? No Grant Fuhrer? No Andy Moog? Really? Well, anyway, yeah. So the other guys I didn't mention were Sarley Solapsky says it. Do, 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 says it. Kirk Muller was in the game for the Habs. Uh, who else did I not mention? Steve Duchesne of the Nordiques. Eli Friedi of the Caps. Yeah. The Randy Carlisle was the commissioner's pick for the Campbell Conference from the Winnipeg Jets and former Leafs coach and Depths coach. Ed Belfour was in the starting lineup as the goalie, wearing double zero. Chelios, Pavel Burry, Brett Hall, Steve Eisman, Paul Coffey as the starting lineup. The reserves were Steve Chason of the Red Wing, Lech, Garth Butcher, Phil Housley of the Jets, Gary Roberts of the Flames, Brian Bradley Kitchener of the Tampa Bay Lightning, Yuri Curry was in that game, too, of the Kings. Luke Robitaille, Dave Manson of the Oilers, Mike Ferdinand, and John Casey were the other goalies, other than Belfort, who laid an egg. And, of course, Wayne Gretzky was the captain. But anyway, a lot of records have happened. There have been some records have been broken. So, anyway... It was amazing to see Mike Gardner 
He was he was just supposed to be a replacement, but he shone the the most. And Peter Tershon's hat trick is so underrated. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.